Now I saw a couple of these on my trauma surgery rotation. About 80% of patients with traumatic aortic injury die before ever reaching the hospital. Now these injuries require high force impact to the thorax or a very rapid deceleration such as a motor vehicle collision. This is because you need shearing force to actually rupture the aorta. Now again, 80% of traumatic aortic injury is due to MVCs, motor vehicle collisions. So look out for someone with a car accident or someone hit by a car in the vignette in addition to a description of chest wall bruising, that's key. Or you can have some other chest wall injuries like broken ribs or maybe a pneumothorax or hemothorax. Now if the test question writers get tricky, they may describe someone that had a big time fall. Fell out of a window, like a rooftop, or maybe a crush injury, like a patient that was crushed from something that collapsed. That's because these mechanisms of injury can also produce enough force required to cause this type of injury. Now, it's important to note that 90% of the time, the injury is noted at the aortic isthmus. So there has to be a reason for this, right? And you bet there is. So the ascending aorta is much more mobile in comparison with the descending aorta, which is much more fixed in position. Now the aortic isthmus right here is the transition zone between the ascending and the descending aorta. It's the one that usually gets screwed in this situation. So what happens is that the intima immediate tear first, then the adventitial tear is usually on the way to the hospital and that means that they're bleeding out into their chest, that's why these patients usually die. So again, after the adventitia tears, you have full on aortic rupture. You may get a chest x-ray that would show what? a widened mediastinum. This widened mediastinum is usually due to a hematoma that's forming within the chest. This is from the bleeding, right? This is not sensitive, meaning that there could be a lot of false negatives. So when there's something weird on the chest x-ray, usually we just go straight to get a chest CT. So if you suspect aortic injury, you'll probably get an image something like this. So here on the left, we can see the radiograph showing a widened mediastinum. Now be careful though because this image on x-ray can mean more than just traumatic aortic injury. You need the vignette to support it and you also need a CT scan like this one here on the right. Now this arrow up here on the top is pointing to the left subclavian artery and the other arrow down here shows us the traumatic aortic injury and how it's progressing towards rupture. Notice how it's bulging out.